sun's out already. What time is it? Eight, eight o'clock in the morning. We're just about to set off for stop number two. We just wanted to say goodbye. Stop number one. Stop number one is done. Goodbye. It was a beautiful little place as well. Except for absolutely you gorgeous. Your head on absolutely everything. Yes. He banged his head on everything, didn't you? Well, look at it. And um, <laughs> his head Roof, lights, toilet. Your head literally filled oh, yeah. at the top. But it's a beautiful place. We're going back to drive now. We've got six hours drive ahead of us. The first day was like probably seven hours driving. So think of going to Switzerland, break it up into two drives and it'll be it's super good. easy. Yeah. Right. Next time you'll see us, we'll be saying hello, stop number two. It'll be hello. <laughs> good morning. We are here. We're in Switzerland. In the northeast part. One hour outside of Zurich. I said northeast because I'm sure on day one's travel vlog I said on the west part. Well, no, that would be wrong. It was the west part of Germany. Didn't realise we were actually driving through Germany, but we did drive through the bottom western part of Germany and it was absolutely beautiful. I forget the name of the town, but it was like old school German wooden cabin shacks. It was actually very. It's how I would envisage Switzerland to look, not how I would envisage Germany to look. But we are here in this place. Wait till I show you the view we've got because that is excellent. Well, I'm waiting for Kate to come out to share the view with you. Um, but we are in the downstairs bit of this house. And this house is owned by a Swiss couple, Verena. I don't know the guy's name, I do apologise. But it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, Airbnb, perfect. So today we've got some nice, lovely sightseeing to show you. And Kate is just coming over with the coffees because coffees are number one. We've got to do that. But here she is. I said, darling, that I would wait for you mm -hmm. to share the view. Okay. I'm a poet, and I don't know it. So. I'm going to give the wife the camera to share the view with you. How are you this morning, darling? I'm good. Good stuff. The view is insane, though. It's insane. So basically, yesterday we drove six and a half hours. Total mileage so far on the trip. I'm going to give you some stats. I think it was 750 miles. But it's gone like a breeze. It's really, really nice. I'm going to hold the camera straight because we just broke it up. So it's made it really pleasant and we've had some nice views. Apart from the sat nav was set to the quickest route. So a lot of the journey in France, especially, was toll roads. So if you want scenic, make sure your sat nav settings aren't set to the quickest routes and avoid toll roads, maybe even avoid motorways. And the sat nav will take you the best routes. We found that out quite late on. <laughs> but yeah, we know it from fortune. we know it from now on and the toll roads from um, in France like as you're making your way through it can be expensive I think we've done about 50 euros worth of tolls because we didn't know so just for reference if you want to say something right can you come into the message so she can show you a view this is our amazing view This is the pool. And that is the river. And we actually went rowing in the river yesterday in the canoe. And this is the beautiful house that we're staying in. We had a little fire pit last night, but yeah, this is the views. It's just stunning. Morning again, guys. We are just coming for a walk on our river. Beautiful scenes, and there's actually we just. 
I came across one guy already swimming down the river for his morning cardio. They do things a bit different in Switzerland. No one's doing steps. People are counting strokes. And there's another guy up there rowing a boat. It's crazy. The water's so clear. Yeah. Show you. It is absolutely amazing. We're going to go and see today, which is very close to us, something called Rhine Waterfall. Apparently it's the largest waterfall in Switzerland. And I think it's the largest because it's the widest, not necessarily the tallest. But let, I wanted to say something this morning. Let's address the elephant in the room. Not okay. <laughs> road trip. Why road trip? Why road trip, babe? Right. You have to do at least two road trips in your entire lifetime two. because it's an opportunity a to see the flipping world and yes. be growth okay growth growth i'm big enough no growth growth mentally. mindset mentally so i was never really fussed about a road trip i like the plane me. i like my comforts blah 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 but when i went to fibo earlier this year Got my brain ticking because few people drove. I think Martin Ford drove, I think Ryan Terry drove. And when you start thinking about it. So, anyway, sorry about that, guys. Road trip. Um, who is walking, and there's some locals. People around here aren't used to people with cameras, <laughs> let me tell you that. It's but. Peaceful, isn't it? Oh, there's some more people. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> right. Shall we finish this? Road trip. So, some key benefits of road trip. I am not, as well, a, I don't enjoy long driving. I get bored. And that's one reason why I really poo pooed road trips and didn't really think about them in the past. But when you plan it, and you plan stops, like I've discussed already, you're not in the car that long. There's lots to take in, scenery. Unless you don't change your sat navs and you end up driving down toll roads the whole way, which you might have done on the way here. But anyway, you're still outside the UK. You have a high element of control over where you want to go because you have your own car. And somewhere like Switzerland, yes, is expensive, but you probably saved a lot of money driving here. It's once in a lifetime. So you save, you prepare for it. And you save in other places like, we're not gonna eat out as much because we have control over what we can buy. And if you're into your health and fitness, I think not being tied into a hotel or something is gonna be better because you have more choice and freedom over what you buy and what you eat. And you're just free to roam and plan where you wanna go. And that's what you're going to see on this trip. So there you go. It's going to be an adventure of a lifetime. Me and Katie are going to love it and share as much with you as possible. And we're going to enjoy finishing off. Said share as much as possible along the way. Our morning walk. Later on, you might see a giant on a boat canoe. Who was on it yesterday? In the river. We went yesterday. It was wicked. Um, some videos of it. We've got some videos on the phones. We've got some videos on here today. See how fast we can get down the river because obviously everything's got to be a challenge. Obviously, Jamie. Right, love you, leave you. In right a bit. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the colour of the water? You are seeing it perfectly right. We've not edited the image. <laughs> it is aqua. Would you say aqua? It's like a greeny blue. Aqua. Like a turquoise. Not like the River Thames, <laughs> which is brun, brown. Yeah, you know this is clean. Beautiful. Look at that solid thumbage. And the tap water, like it's safe, it's completely safe to drink. You can literally- Oh, just... we've had a field day with the tap water. Yeah, it's and it, the taste is insane, isn't it? It tastes like you're drinking bottled water. water. There's no chemical taste, there's no nothing. It's literally so pure. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Right, we continue. We continue. Forwards. Room with a view, anyone? Imagine living there. 
This place is legit. Check that out, guys. So we were planning on driving to this today, but we've actually walked it. I think it's about 45 minutes down the riverbank. And that is the Rhine River waterfalls. And you can get a boat trip, but there's a boat there that drives you right close to the waterfalls. We're gonna get a bit closer now, but I thought I'd take this video now because it's a bit quieter here. Obviously, the closer we get, the louder it's gonna get. That is stunning. So, we have decided to go on a little boat trip to the falls. This is completely like not plans. So these are always the best at plans, aren't they? They're not plans. We've gone off piste. But it is 10 o'clock, I'm starving. So, next thing you'll see is the falls. Then we're gonna walk back, have breakfast, and then get on some uh, more. What is it, like a 45 minute walk? About a 45, 50 minute walk back, yeah. But anyway, this is the first part of our endeavors on our search around this place in Switzerland today. And I left my sunglasses on boat number two. Oh God, we're gonna get sunglasses back, plonker. Right, see you at the falls. I don't know if you can see that guys, but that is an air blimp there. Yeah. It says on it, next generation mobility. So I don't know whether they're selling uh, arthritis products or that is next generation travel right there. But yeah, that is an air blimp. Last time I saw one of those was in Super uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> It's actually quite surreal just watching people float down the river. Anyway, seeing as it's a fitness channel, fitness and bodybuilding, I'm gonna give you some fitness information. Check me out. Whilst you're at it, please like the video. If you wanna see more vlogging from Switzerland and our travels, and obviously fitness content when we're back home, um, and subscribe to the channel. It really does help, and I appreciate it. So does the wife. So. I get asked a lot by clients and not clients, just people in general, how to stay in shape and how to manage food and training and everything while you're on vacation. Well, a key part for me over the years to keep progressing as a bodybuilder, keep improving the physique and making sure you're making progress towards your goals is stress management. So your vacation needs to be as stress-free as possible. And a lot of that means not stressing about what you're eating, what you're training, etc., etc. So my guidance really, when you go abroad, is bloody enjoy yourself. It's a vacation. Unless you're going on a training holiday and that's your specific reason for being there, chill the F out. Make sure you're active in the day. Do walks like we have this morning. Watch what you eat through the day. Just be smart, I would say, most of the time during the day when you're out and about you don't have to be but this is like the the rule of thumb that i would take you're generally going to eat less and then that will allow, allow you to splurge go a bit crazy in the evening time when you can visit a nice restaurant or plan in some off-plan food and that's what we'll do most days probably every day um like i said stopping airbnbs and traveling you can control what you're eating by going to the supermarket making sandwiches etc but general rule there guys, just be active, relax, enjoy yourself, 
remember this is probably one or two of your only holidays and only times to really relax for the whole year so don't be caught up in your goals thinking you have to do them 365 days a year because I think that will increase stress and that will actually set you back in the long term. Peace out for now. We're going to get some breakfast and they, maybe you can see but there are people just gliding down the river. Love it. Hello, hello, hello. Right, we are at a Swiss fountain. One of the things you do in Switzerland is drink the water straight from the fountain because it's that clean and pure. Yeah, so, gonna buy water. go ahead, babe, just give it a whirl. Right. Taste test. Taste test. Nice. Yeah, amazing. Let me try. Like no chemicals, no nothing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It tastes clean, doesn't it? Yeah. It's cold it's as taste. well. Oh, it's in water. It just tastes like anything warm. In the, the UK, it's the UK, it tastes chemically. You can even yeah. smell the chlorine in it, mm. can't you? The fluoride that works lingo. That's gorgeous. Bravo. Yo guys, I have to look at this camera without my glass on by the way because these Ray-Bans I've got are, got glare protection on. Can't see a thing. I can't see the camera when I'm videoing with on. Anyway, we're at the top of Castle Muno of Schaffhausen, a lovely Swiss village about 15 minutes from where we're staying. We're just taking away the views, taking in the views. We just had our first hit of altitude training, climbing the stairs. And it's about 32 degrees centigrade as well, so it's red hot. But this place is beautiful. This whole video, Kate is gonna have like a head chopped off. There you go. Right, anyway. Check the view out. Bellissimo. And on that Italian word, I'm going to tell you a bit of Swiss culture right now. Here we go. J and K travel guide, eat your art out. Did you know that the native language of Switzerland was 60% German, 30% French, and 10% Italian? And I guess they're in the regions of where it borders those countries. Thank you very much for listening. See you all again, and we'll see you at the next stop, wherever that is. We've got plenty to do today, so let's get cracking. Let's have some Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a Swiss toilet. Katie informed you this is the most high-tech toilet known to man. It looks like something you find on a space shuttle. Let's give it a try. Right, so guys, I've just put the seat down. I've had a wee, but I put the seat down after to show you what we've got here. We've got like a wash. Let's wash it. Oh, the seat's cool. Let's give it a wash it. Let's have some soap, let's have some soap going on. Mad. Someone's waiting outside. I've got to go, but that is the best toilet ever, and it's free. 20p in the UK. Awesome. Hey guys, we are pulled up on the side of the road in Switzerland because Katie has just had a wet dream. A, a, I was going to say something similar. I was trying to think of a PC way to say orgasm, but I don't think there's a way. Anyway, she is happy as Larry because you've probably seen on her stories if you follow her. She loves a bit of organic, she loves a bit of health and good to the environment, good for animals, etc, etc. No comment in, yeah, but you're a bodybuilder and you eat loads of meat, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, each their own. She loves certain things. She loves being good to the environment. And in Switzerland, they have these things where you can dispense pure cow milk, not straight from the cow, but the, the farmers 
basically, I'm going to show you. This hose here goes nowhere, but this is a cow milk vending machine. Pure cow milk on the vendor. And I'm going to get some cash so we can utilize this bad boy beast. Then that. Oh. <laughs> Look at that face. Look how happy that face is. Oh my god. This is eight. This is heaven. Get, get, get milked. Milked straight from the, the tip. <laughs> get, ready to, get ready to press stop. Oh, where's the stop? Stop. There. <gasps> we just did it. Just did it. Just found the stop button. Have a drink then. Hang on, because I need to get myself drinking this. Yeah? Let me hold it. I'm going to double can. Double can. Let's sort this out. There you go. You are live on two cameras. Please do not swear. Go. This is my ultimate dream right now. To come straight off Yeah, it's got nothing to do with me but drinking a cow's milk. How's that for you? Good. Can I have a drink of your milk? Yeah. Give me some milk. <laughs> no, seriously. I want some milk. Okay, I'm going Well, there's your phone. Oh, yeah, it's nice and cold, isn't it? Yeah. Here, I've got to put my glasses on because it's nice and cool for this milk. Oh, that's really lovely. Great. I've got a milk moustache. Yeah. Mmm. <sighs> that's good. Right, quickly. Okay, let's explain to the viewers why this is such an orgasmic dream of yours. Really? Tell us. Yeah, yeah. honestly. You know, they don't want like a 10 minute version, the one minute version. Right, so I am a hormone practitioner, so I specialise in everything hormones. When it comes to food, when it comes to the quality of food, in the UK, in America, all places like that, they feed our cows full of GMOs, oestrogen, oestrogen flipping antibiotics, all of that, and it goes straight into the milk. So you think about if the animal is getting fed poorly, your milk will be poorly. So, and we're drinking poorly. Yeah, it, it affects our hormones. Like, if, if the cows are being fed estrogen, it's going to be excess estrogen, which causes estrogen dominance. This is fresh, this is grass fed, this is cows that are happy, that are fed proper, proper food. Goes into the milk, happy cow, happy milk. Happy you, happy, happy me. me. Anti inflammatory, protein. What did they say back when you was a kid? You drink are what you drink eat. milk to grow. Yes, and that is very true because I drank a lot of milk when I was young and I did grow. And now it's been chemically enhanced to a larger degree, which is definitely affecting us as individuals as humans growing. Um, I'll just finish this off by saying it is true, you are what you eat, but you are what you drink as well. What you eat and drink goes inside of us. That helps repair muscle cells, muscle tissues, organs, etc. And that is why they say you are what you eat because if you do eat crap, then you're repairing yourself with a sub-standard quality of nutrition that is going to lead to inflammation, diseases, infections. Your body can digest this. Your body can't digest the fake crap that they produce. And that's why a big thing for me and Katie as coaches, obviously Katie specializes in hormone coaching for women. I'm more like a fitness-based coach, but the same thing applies in terms of digestion, people having bloating, People struggling with inflammation, a lot of it is down to your diet, your lifestyle and your habits, your routines. So if you're having bloating issues, look at what you're eating, look at what you're drinking, be more focused on what's in the product and I'm sure you'll be happy, healthier before you know it. And if you're not happier and healthier and you need some more help, there's me and her to give you an open hand. Right, we're off to co-op to try and find a swimming boy to help us float in the river because we're both crap at swimming. I mean, Katie's got two big floats there but they're not helping enough, so we need some more. Speak to you later.